Good afternoon and welcome to Investor Schooling Live. Coming to you from Investor Schooling Headquarters in Langhorne, Pennsylvania. I'm Phil Falcone here with Larry Steinhaus. We are the founders of Investor Schooling. What do we do here? We teach people about real estate investing and stock option investing. Call us with your questions at any time during the show. Don't worry about what we're talking about. Just call us, 855-939-1137. We love to talk to our listeners. That's 855-939-1137. Yes, we are a live program. So you can call us anytime during the show, and we will take your calls. So like I said, we're located in Langhorne, Pennsylvania, serving the Philadelphia area in a real brick-and-mortar building. That's correct. We are local guys who invest in real estate, and we are accessible to our students a minimum of two nights a week. Learn this business from people who live it every day. Yo, Larry, what's on your mind today? Oh, this is my favorite part of the show when I get to talk about what's going on in life. I am so excited about something tonight that we're, you and I are going to do tonight, you know, and we're going to do it as partners. I'm, I'm sorry, as business partners. For those of you who listen to the business show, you got the joke. Business partners is a very important designation. We're business partners. That's right. You know, I had somebody come in the office the other day, and they were with their significant other, and they said they were partners, and I didn't know what they meant. <laughs> and they explained to me, we're a couple. I'm like, oh, now I get it. Now I understand why Phil gets so upset about it every time I say, every time I say partners. <laughs> I don't so get anyway. upset about it, but I think it's important. <laughs> so anyway, what, what I'm talking about, though, is we're going out to dinner tonight. You, uh, myself, and you, and and your wife, and my wife, we're all going out to dinner. I'm so excited that we get to go to a real restaurant and and have a meal made by somebody else for a change. By the way, my wife has always been a good cook. She's became a great cook over the last uh, over the last couple of months, like incredible cook over the last couple of months. I I'm still excited about yesterday's meal, but to go out to dinner, man, wow! I'm done. The show's over. I'm so excited. I just want to go home and go to dinner. Well, I got a call from uh, City Cards the other day. And they said, is everything okay? You know? <laughs> and I said, well, what's the problem? And they said, well, usually we have about $10,000 a month in, in, in meals. In meals, and right, exactly, right, right, right. Well, so, I, I've noticed uh, how much money I've saved. I find a circle. I'm like, my bill's like, wow, you know what? My bill didn't go up that much this month. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've been doing that, too. I've been looking at my credit card bills, and I'm going, geez, I'm a really good money manager. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, wait a minute. You know, uh, you know, five grand a, a month on cocktails, five grand a month on food. It happens pretty quick. Right, exactly. And, it, and then some of that you even eat yourself, too, right? Some of it. Yeah, right. It. <laughs> right. So the other thing that's pretty exciting, and you know, uh, I know we're on, we're on live uh, right now on WPHC, but we're on, we have some, some radio commercials going on, or the radio stations. And I have to tell you a funny story. We, had, we have those commercials uh, that are very comical commercials, and they're running on a, on a station in New Jersey and we've gotten some comments on him. One guy went crazy on Facebook and started to talk to us and say, how dare you say Wu, Chinese Wuhan virus? He got so upset about that. But then we had somebody who actually commented on his comment, it was on Facebook, commented on his comment, goes, your <laughs> commercials are hysterical. Please don't pull them. <laughs> yeah, I had a friend of mine call me from Sea Isle City, and she heard it uh, you know, all the way down by the Atlantic Ocean. That's awesome. And she said they were hysterical. And which was her favorite? Uh, I don't even. I didn't. I never asked her which one she even heard. Because, because you know, we we wait. Because I gotta it tell you, it must have been one that I was in because she doesn't know you and she knows well, me. Well, let's do let's do the one. I'm gonna. I gotta play it because it's, ahead, it's play absolutely it. hysterical. So we we've, we've been playing this commercial actually on a ra- another radio station, and this is the one. Hi, I'm Phil Falcone from InvestorSchooling.com. I want to invite you to a complimentary class this Thursday night at 7 p.m. in Langhorn. Our bubble buoy suits will protect you from the Chinese Wuhan death virus. Does that make me sound like a racist? You can also attend via Zoom. Just sign up at InvestorSchooling.com. We will teach you real estate investing and stock option investing. Real estate has been around since before Jesus' time, and stock options came, like, just a couple weeks later. So get your butt to this (laughs) meeting and learn these skills. I have faith in our bubble boy suits. They will protect you from the Chinese Wuhan death virus. But going to the bathroom in these things is harder than getting Mao Zedong Wolf to open up Pennsylvania. (laughs) So... 
If you're not a snowflake and you're not scared of the big bad wolf, come Thursday night at 7 o'clock, investorschooling.com. So that is that is just hysterical. And that's the commercial that's playing on that station, and that was the one that we got the comments on. I, I just Every time I hear it, I just have to laugh. It's just so funny. Well, uh, one comment I would make is that uh, I was having trouble going to the bathroom in those Bubba Boy suits, but I'm getting better at it. I, I know, and actually, I really hate the fact that we have to clean those Bubba Boy suits after every single event. It's just that they're so big. I mean, the bubbles are too big. I can barely get through the bathroom door. <laughs> we must laugh. Not... <laughs> I got to make the doors wider. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, put that on the project list. We know? must really love our students Take, to give out these bubble boy suits, right? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, if you've if you've never tried on a bubble boy suit, well, this is really a reason you should come to the school alone. Forget about the fact that we're going to teach you how to make gobs of money investing in real estate. Forget about the fact that you're going to learn how to do stock option investing where you can make 35% on your money in like a week. Don't let that bring you here. Come for the Bubba Boy suits. <laughs> These suits are worth the laugh just to come here. And if you, all you have to do is tell us at the front door that you're not coming in without a Bubba Boy suit on, and we'll send a couple of our ladies to come over and zip you up. And if <laughs> our ladies come zip them up, wow, I, I, like, I didn't expect you to say that. Which ladies? What, what you don't know? Well, I, You're the one that hired these Playboy bunnies. Sh- my wife might be listening. I told you not to mention that kind of stuff over the, over the, on the air. Okay. Well, she's probably not listening. <laughs> I'll bet you she's right now listening. <laughs> anyway, so so uh, wow. Uh, are we supposed to be doing some show on yeah, stock options? Yeah, we or got, real a, estate we or got a couple of topics here. You want to talk about them? Let's talk about them. Okay. So one of the topics was: Do realtors know everything about the real estate business? I have a feeling this will be a fun topic to talk about. Yeah, definitely a fun topic. Is Real estate, the best investment ever. Ooh, I got an opinion on that. And then at the end of the show, we're going to talk about our stock option picks of the week. So if you're a stock investor or a stock option investor, this is the part you don't want to miss. We got a couple of serious questions that came to us from some of our shy students or shy listeners. One, One guy asked, are loan rates at their lowest point now? And another young lady asked, is this a good time to sell or to buy? So she must be an investor if she has the option of selling houses or buying houses. And the third question was, how many cars can Larry drive at once? <laughs> so we're going to get into that you question. You baited that question. I know you baited that question. And we'll get into that question at some point. So I want you to stick around, and when we come back, we're going to talk about do realtors know everything about the real estate business. We'll be back in two minutes. Hi, I'm Phil Falcone from Investorschooling.com. I'm inviting you to a complimentary class in Langhorn this Thursday night at 7 p.m. I will teach you how to buy ugly houses and make them beautiful. As a bonus, we will also teach you stock option investing. So get your butt to this meeting, 7 p.m. this Thursday night, Langhorn, 215-876-3002, 215-876-3002, Investorschooling.com. Hey, everybody. It's Larry Sinus from Investorschooling.com. You heard my partner, Phil Falcone, tell you why you should be there this Thursday night to learn about real estate investing and learn about stock options trading. We're telling you right now, you will make more money than you've ever made in your entire life if you learn these two skills. Be there this Thursday night at 7 o'clock in our Langhorn headquarters. Go to Investorschooling.com. Pull over right now. Take out your phone and go to Investorschooling.com. RSVP right now. Investorschooling.com. See you Thursday. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. I got a question for you. What do you get for $4.95 a month at Executech Suites? You get an office big enough for one person. You get the furniture in that office. You get the telephone on the desk. You get the telephone number. You get the fax number. You get the internet. You get two full-time receptionists to answer the phone in the name of your company and patch the calls to you, whether you're in the office, in your car, or at home sleeping on a couch. You get the conference rooms. You get the mailboxes. You get the printer, the copy, the scanner. You get the janitorial service, the utilities, and free coffee. I know it's hard to believe that you could get all those things for $495 a month, but it's true. 67 Buck Road in Huntington Valley, Executech Suites. Give us a call, 215-942-7701, 215-942-7701.
Hey everybody, it's Larry Sinus from InvestorSchooling.com. And I'm Phil Falcone from InvestorSchooling.com. Hey, what are we going to teach him this Thursday night, Phil? We're going to teach you how to invest in real estate so you can build a basis to get rich. And I promise I'm going to teach you stock options. So go to InvestorSchooling.com and RSVP right now. Right, Phil? We've been in this business for 30 years. We have amazing amounts of information to share with you. Get your butt to this meeting this Thursday night in Langhorn. InvestorSchooling.com. It's Larry Steinhaus, and I'm here at Investor Schooling Live. I'm here with my <coughs> business partner, Phil Falcone, and we are having fun on the radio once again this week. We're talking about stock options and real estate and how to make more money and how to save more money, because we do occasionally talk about how to save money from taxes. Hey, if you're paying too much taxes, we can also teach you that too. But more importantly, I'm going to teach you guys to call right now. Pick up your cell phone and call 855-939-1137 because we'd love to talk to you. Uh, we're a live show and we have a real live questions. 855-939-1137. Call in right now and let's have some fun. All right, Phil. Wait, I got to tell you something, Phil. I just noticed something that my wife left us a message on Facebook Live saying that she is listening. So stop talking about the dancing girls who are going to come in and zip up the bubble boy suits, okay? Well, but I already said they were playboy bunnies. Uh, okay, but sh I told you she's listening. Okay. Uh, <laughs> why'd you bring it up? Oh, yeah, wait a minute. That didn't make much sense either, did it? <laughs> <laughs> L Linda, stop listening. All right. All right, so what do we got going on, Mr. Phil? Well, well, let's hit the topic of do realtors know everything about the real estate Oh, do business? we have to? Yeah, let's touch on this. All right. So... I remember when I first got into this business, I was talking to, uh, to some fellow uh, newbie investors. And one of the investors said to me, he said, you know, it's almost futile to try to buy real estate investments because the realtors grab up all the good ones. <laughs> and I busted out laughing. Yeah, I could understand that. Because I said, you don't know that many realtors. Right. By the way, the word is realtor. Not realtor. You mean realtor. Not like docator. <laughs> realtor is not how you pronounce the word. It's a realtor, like doctor, realtor, doctor, realtor. And by the way, I have to tell you something. I'm not finished. Okay, go ahead. Don't interrupt me when I'm doing my favorite rant. All right, okay? go ahead. Finish your rant. Okay. And people, if if you know a realtor or an agent who calls themselves a realtor. You should tell them that they should call their docket tour and book an appointment with them because they need some help. Okay, can I talk now? Yeah, you can talk. All right, I just want to make sure because, you know, I have to tell you something. You might not know this, but you and I are not realtors. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> we, are, we are just real estate agents. We are not realtors. We're not allowed to have the prestigious capital R on our business card. Yes, can we, do you want to mention that before we mention whether real estate agents know what they're doing? Mention whatever you want, go ahead. Okay, so here's the deal. So, so and I'm not gonna bash realtors, um, at least not on the air. <laughs> but the idea is, <laughs> if, you can hear, if you can hear Phil snickering in the background, you know how my, my you can tell my, my opinion. I can also tell my wife right now is shaking her head right now. She's going, he better not do this on the air. Okay, so I won't. But here's the deal. So we decided that we're not realtors. Realtors is just a club. It's a union that you join. And frankly, I was the most disappointed this last couple of months in the Pennsylvania Association of Realtors because the Pennsylvania Association of Realtors didn't help anyone open their realty business. Where was the support? Yeah, exactly. You're supposed to represent realtors in the state of Pennsylvania. I didn't hear a peep. I didn't hear. Yeah. I didn't see a single email. I didn't, what about the MLS, Bright MLS? Where, were there, where was the support coming from then? Where was the support from the Pennsylvania Realtors Association? Didn't see a thing, did you? I did not, and I was so disappointed. Matter of fact, I posted on several posts on Facebook if, if uh, PAR, P Pennsylvania Association of Realtors, actually would do what – because all the real estate agents that are realtors are paying $500 a year, and if they want to be worth their $500 a year, they would have said to us, go open up your business, and we will defend you in court. That's what they should have said. That's exactly what they should have said. But anyway, 
that is my realtor rant on my Pennsylvania Association. I'll, t- I'll talk about rant. another guy who's disappointed me is the Attorney General of the United States, Barr. Where has he been? Like he he's sitting in a microphone talking about nothing. Where is his opinion on this topic? Why are they not pressuring governors to open? I want to hear that when I turn the TV on. Right. And, of course, we're open now. No guts. No guts. That's right. I have a store, a retail store in Hapro. Now, Hapro actually looked like I was working on Saturday, and Hapro actually looked like it was open on Saturday. But I'll tell you, the truth be, it was still 75% of stores were closed. And I don't know what these people are afraid of. I don't know what they're waiting for. Hey, as a matter of fact, if you want to call in right now and talk to us about a business that you have that you were afraid to open or have you just opened, we'd love to hear it. Actually, if, you're, if you just opened a business, I want to hear that you opened a business because we'll come visit you. That's how excited I am about it. 855-939-1137 is our phone number. 855-939-1137 is our phone number. So if you have a business, please tell us about it. So getting back to real estate agents, yeah, and whether they, which was the original question. Let's get back to that. Somehow I we never even, somehow we went off on a tangent. It doesn't matter. We can do whatever we want. That's right. It's our hour. Right. So let me say a couple things about this. I noticed that when agents call me, whether they are realtors or agents, it doesn't matter to me. When they call me, they often say, I have a client who's very excited about so-and-so house. And it makes you wonder, right? Like, for example, I recently had put up some deeply discounted properties for sale on the MLS. And most agents' voicemails that they left me went something like this. Hi, my name is so-and-so, and and I'm from so-and-so real estate agency. I have a client who's very excited about buying your property at so-and-so address. Now, Larry, can you explain to the people what's wrong with that message that they left me? It's real simple what's wrong with it. If I was calling Phil, I would go, hey, Phil, it's Larry Steinhaus from the Investor Brokerage, which, by the way, is our Investor Brokerage. We own, we own a company called the Investor Brokerage. We Good help plug. People, we, yeah, we help people with uh, buying real estate, investment real estate, and we also help real estate agents. What's the name of your brokerage? It's called the Investor Brokerage. <laughs> <laughs> Good name. And they can call us also. Uh, they can call us at 267-486-1400. <laughs> but anyway, so uh, I would be calling this like this. this. Actually, I can tell you this is a conversation right here. Ring, ring. Hello. Hey, is this Phil? Yes, it is. Hey, Phil, it's Larry Sinus from the Investor Brokerage. you have a minute? Yeah, what can I do for you, Larry? Hey, listen, you listed 123 Main Street. Um, you have it listed for for a really good price of 200000 I'd like to see it. I'd like to buy it. When can I see it? Uh, it's on a lockbox. Go over there anytime you want. Look and showing time. Go see it. That's it. You guys understand the difference between the conversation that I just had with Phil and the conversation that Phil suggested people have or said that people have? Should we clarify for him just in case? Yeah, clarify it. It's real simple. If I got a deal that that's good, I'm buying it. Why am I going to let another another person have it? That's the big difference right there. So these agents who, who leave you a message saying, I have a client who's very interested in it. The question is, and even the client should be asking them that, why are you not buying this property? Why would you want to collect a small commission for helping me buy a property that you should be buying yourself. And possibly it's because they don't know how. And I know a place where you could learn how. It's called Investor Schooling. Investorschooling.com. You know they have complimentary classes every Thursday night at 7 o'clock? Thursday night, 7 o'clock, complimentary? Including this Thursday night coming up. And and, and if you you can't go to the movies on a Thursday night, you might as well come, right? You can't go to a restaurant. Well, you can go to a restaurant now, but you have to have outdoor seating. Yeah, maybe. But... uh, (laughs) You'll probably get bit by mosquitoes. Yeah, there you go. And in here, you won't get bit by mosquitoes. You and, won't. And, 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 if you wonder the, where the, and then we have the bubble boy suits. Yeah, where else are you going to get a bubble boy suit? you got to come here. <laughs> so what else? <laughs> What's the next question that we had on that list? <laughs> uh, I'll tell you something funny. I mean, when you are a realtor as opposed to an agent, meaning you're a member of the, the sacred union of Pennsylvania realtors, <laughs> uh, when, you, when you are in that union... You know, <laughs> you do you pay five hundred dollars a year for that. But the thing that really, as an owner of an office, the thing that really set me off was if we had thirty agents in the office and yeah. one agent didn't pay his annual bill, 
the organization, the union, the Pennsylvania Realtors Association, which is supposed to be an entity to support and assist me in my business, they called me up and said, if so-and-so doesn't pay his uh, uh, $500 a year, we're going to shut down the MLS for your entire office. That's right. I'm being threatened by an organization that pretends that they're going to protect me? Yeah, so uh, I, I, yeah, so we we are anti association of realtors for several reasons, and that's that's the probably the biggest one, right there. But I hate bashing the, the realtor association because we want to talk about our school and how cool our school is, and how actually interestingly enough, we actually tell our students to become real estate agents, not realtors, but real estate agents, because they have access to the MLS that way, and they can do things like comp houses, they can list their house, they can find houses that. You know, uh, maybe a, a realtor missed that they didn't know that they wanted because you you actually find houses that realtors list that surprise that even surprises me. Some that houses that they list. Now, <laughs> I mean, I used to have set I used to set stuff in the MLS. I used to set stuff in the MLS to send me a message when it met a certain criteria, like criteria five years ago. And actually, five years ago, I bought seven houses off the MLS, which was really unusual. In one year, I bought seven houses off the MLS. I bought others, but I bought seven houses off the MLS because I used to set a criteria to send me an email whenever it reached, whenever it hit this criteria, and the criteria was under a hundred thousand, three bedroom, two and a half bath, and I bought several houses like that. You can't find them anymore. Uh, I, I would actually set that criteria. Well, for back now. in the day, you could have found them easy. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like five years ago, that was great, and it was great to do it. If you and at the same time, now I'm using the MLS because I want to source people who maybe had uh, expired listings. Uh, or expired rental listings is a really good one. I send them, if so, somebody has a listing of a rental and it expires, I send them a letter saying, hey, I see you had trouble renting your place. Maybe you want to sell it instead, and that's a really great way to buy a house. So becoming a real estate agent and hanging your license with a company like ours is a really good idea. Yeah, I would tell you that I never work with clients. Never, right? I don't take buyers around and show them properties, unless it was really extenuating circumstances and a, a good friend or somebody that really needed my help, I would do it. Otherwise, I never do that kind of work, right? And most of the time when I'm listing a property, it's my property anyway. So I'm, I'm just using my license. I'm not even looking to make money off of my license. But because we do so many real estate deals, because we are full-time investors, sometimes I make 20, 30 grand a year and I'm not even, the funny part is I'm not even trying to make any money as a real. Yeah, right, exactly. I'm totally focused on investments, building up investments that I can wholesale or that I can flip or that I can keep. And, and these kind of investments is where all of my energies and efforts go. But to make, you know, even on a bad year, you make 15 grand. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, yeah, exactly. I always tell people I accidentally make about 50,000, 60,000 accidentally. People come up to me like, hey, can you find me a house? And I actually look at them and go, are you seriously ready to buy one? Because if not, I don't have time for you. And that's really how it is. But that's, the, you know, that's us. The, you know, we're, we, we have the school. We have other things going on. We have our own real estate investing businesses. So I, I want to talk about something else real quick before we go into the next topic. Go ahead. And it, it has to do with, like, students who come to us, new students who come to us. So a lot of people come to us, and you might be listening right now going, oh, man, this is really cool. These guys know what they're doing. I'm not so sure if I can do that. And I, and I want to give you a story, and, and basically, here's, here's what the story is. In my entire life, and I mean this, in my entire life, I have never run more than probably a half a mile. Like, when I mean run is like jogging. I've never run more than a half a mile in my entire life. And I, and I hired a personal trainer about three or four months ago, and he's been training with me um, pretty much five to six times a week. And that's, if you want to equate that to somebody coming to the school and saying, hey, I never bought real estate before, right? This is exactly... The scenario. Today, I hit my personal best. I ran six consecutive miles without stopping. That's amazing. Yeah, and, and, and actually, so you when you should it, have bet me like ten thousand dollars that you were going to do that. You know what? I, I I'd could be have, cutting you a check right I, now. I should have, because you're absolutely right. I bet you there was no way that anyone would have ever thought I did it, and it was hard. But it, w but I did it. I mean, th I remember the first day I went for the run, I couldn't even go ten houses without stopping. Then I went a half a mile without stopping. Then it was a two miles. Then it was three miles. Then a was he whipping ago. you while you were doing this? No. <laughs> was he dragging you like with a pickup truck and a chain? No. No? <laughs> nope. You nope. actually did it, huh? I actually did it. You could ask Linda. Lin Linda, leave a comment saying that, you know, because actually Linda actually was, was there with me this morning because I 
planned on making it this morning, and it was tough. The what was your other goal? Pull ups or something? Uh, right. So right. So yeah. My so I have three goals. The one goal is to run five miles. I ran six this morning. Uh, the other one is to do ten pull ups. I can do five assisted pull ups right now, which I couldn't do any when I started. And uh, my other goal is to hit two hundred pounds or less. I'm about two twenty two, two twenty three right now. Well, so if you got that at two hundred, you'd, you'd be close to ten. It's all body. You're, yeah, you're, I, you're I agree. Lifting all yeah. this body weight. <laughs> and Linda writes, "I was chasing her." Yeah, no, actually, I wasn't quite chasing her. What was really happening was she was running faster than me. <laughs> all right, cool, excellent. So, I just want to remind you guys: if you want to call in eight five five nine three nine eleven thirty seven. I know we're talking about a bunch of different stuff. Well, but that's, that's what we do. We do what we want to do. Yeah, exactly. So let's, hit, let's hit a question right now. So are loan rates at their lowest point right now? What do you think? Oh, I, I think they are definitely at their lowest point. But, but so what? If they go a half a point lower, it's not going to make much of a difference. Get in, get in, get yeah. in. I mean, it's dirt cheap right now yeah. is the bottom line. Three and so a half, four percent. So yeah. really, look, look, we don't even work as, as realtors, so we're not looking to get your business for that. Right. But what we are saying is, is that if you're thinking about buying a house, this is probably a, a pretty darn good time to do it. So get out there and make it happen. If you've got the money, if you've got the ability to do it, you want to do it. Another one of our questions is, is this a good time to sell or buy? It's a good time to sell and buy. How's that? I would kind of agree with that. Okay, so it's a good let, – let me explain my thoughts. It's a good time to buy because interest rates are low, and if you're going to go to a bank and get the financing – and you can get it, and you're going to be able to get the money, then you'll be able to buy a, 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 sh a very large uh, amount of different t kinds of properties that will be available for you to buy. Is it a good time to sell? Absolutely. It's also a good time to sell. Now, usually those two things aren't hot at the same time. But because the real estate market was shut down, essentially realtors could not work. So nothing in February, nothing in March. Nothing in April, right? Or was it March, April, May? It was March, April, May. So nothing got done, and people who need properties, people who need to, to move into a new property, they need to buy right now. And from what I'm told, the, the inventory is limited. Yeah, and that's, that's ex it's, it's perfect. It's exactly right. And here's a really cool part, too. Now, and I said this last week. I, I was talking about how it's a seller's market and a buyer's market at the same time, or it's a seller's market or it's a buyer's market. Well, it's technically going to be one or the other, but neither the buyer or the seller knows which one it is right now. And you could use that to your advantage in every single way. I'm certainly not going to tell them. Right, exactly. I mean, you know, look, and, and you know, we're going to go out. You go, look, you, you, your house might sell right away. It might not sell right away. But maybe if you sell it to us, or if you sell it to me, or if you sell it to Phil, you're going to sell it right away. So why not just sell it and forget about it? You don't have to worry about it anymore. All right, we got one more question before we go to a quick commercial break. How many cars can Larry drive at once? <laughs> so, so, <laughs> uh, uh, so I can probably drive. Well, if I drive uh, two, what I can do is I can drive one six miles, run back to the other one, drive it back to the other one, then drive the next one six miles, then run back to the next one for six miles. But I couldn't do that very long. Yeah, I don't think you'd get past the second car. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> All right, so when we come back, we're going to talk about is real estate the best investment ever? And I'm going to give you my opinion on that topic with some real reasons why. We'll be back in two minutes. Hi, I'm Phil Falcone from Investorschooling.com. I'm inviting you to a complimentary class in Langhorn this Thursday night at 7 p.m. I will teach you how to buy ugly houses and make them beautiful. As a bonus, we will also teach you stock option investing. So get your butt to this meeting, 7 p.m. this Thursday night, Langhorn, 215-876-3002, Investorschooling.com. Hey, everybody. It's Larry Sinus from Investorschooling.com. You heard my partner, Phil Falcone, tell you why you should be there this Thursday night to learn about real estate investing and learn about stock options trading. We're telling you right now you will make more money than you've ever made in your entire life if you learn these two skills. Be there this Thursday night at 7 o'clock in our Langhorn headquarters. Go to Investorschooling.com. Pull over right now. Take out your phone and go to Investorschooling.com. RSVP right now. Investorschooling.com. See you Thursday. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. I got a question for you. What do you get for $4.95 a month at Executech Suites? 
You get an office big enough for one person. You get the furniture in that office. You get the telephone on the desk. You get the telephone number. You get the fax number. You get the internet. You get two full-time receptionists to answer the phone in the name of your company and patch the calls to you, whether you're in the office, in your car, or at home sleeping on a couch. You get the conference rooms, you get the mailboxes, you get the printer, the copy, the scanner, you get the janitorial service, the utilities, and free coffee. I know it's hard to believe that you could get all those things for $495 a month, but it's true. 67 Buck Road in Huntington Valley, Executech Suites. Give us a call, 215-942-7701, 215-942-7701. Hey everybody, it's Larry Sinus from InvestorSchooling.com. And I'm Phil Falcone from InvestorSchooling.com. Hey, what are we going to teach him this Thursday night, Phil? We're going to teach you how to invest in real estate so you can build a basis to get rich. And I promise I'm going to teach you stock options. So go to InvestorSchooling.com and RSVP right now. Right, Phil? We've been in this business for 30 years. We have amazing amounts of information to share with you. Get your butt to this meeting this Thursday night in Langhorn. InvestorSchooling.com. Back at Investor Schooling Live. Hey, check it out, everybody. This is just so much fun. We're, we're here, and nobody's calling. You guys got a call. Give us a call, 855-939-1137. You know, we, we repeat this show on Saturdays. It's very funny because I get, have the, the number, this number, 855-939-1137, going to my cell phone during that show. And we always get calls from people during that show. And yesterday, I got a great call, actually. I just wanted to mention it, too. We got a call yesterday from a gentleman in, uh, down the shore, actually, in Jersey Shore. He called me up. He goes, I just have to tell you, I'm so excited. I, you picked uh, WFC, Wells Fargo, the other day. I played it, and I made a whole lot of money. And it wasn't a student. It was a guy who bought it at 25, and he wanted to know when he should sell it. And I thought it was pretty awesome that we got a call like that. So if you want to call in right now and ask us about a stock, ask us about a stock option, or ask us about real estate or anything that has to do with money, 855-939-1137. Yeah, that Wells Fargo pick was a good pick. That was a good one. I made some nice money off yeah, it. Yeah, me too. I actually made 75% on that play. That was an awesome play. And it went up after I made 75%, which is pretty inc incredible. 75% on a trade that took you, what, three weeks? I think it was four weeks. I think that one, yeah. Yeah, it was four weeks on that one. <laughs> yep, yep. So what's the next topic? So what is the next topic? I don't know. You already talked about how many cars I can drive at once. That's just so, it's so upsetting. And so how about is real estate the best investment ever? I like it. What do you think about that topic? So I really like real estate. Real estate is my favorite investment for so many reasons. Look, I, you know, I'm a stock options trader, and you can make big bucks tra trading stock options, and I teach stock options trading. And then a lot of people actually say to me, well, if you can make that much money stock options trading, why do you invest in real estate? Because real estate is, mo first of all, it's much safer than stock options, of course. But the other thing that's important about real estate is it, it's like it is, it's always there. So basically what happens is you buy a property, and let's say you pay, I don't know, you pay $100,000 for it. Even if the price, even if the hundred thousand never goes up, we all know that's going to happen. We all know that's going to be worth more than hundred thousand dollars in a certain period of time. I don't care what period of time; it doesn't matter. Five years, ten years, twenty years. In twenty years, it's probably going to be worth double. But let's say assume it doesn't even go up. Let's say it's assume it's worth a hundred thousand. And the way I like to buy properties, I like to buy them and take over mortgages. So if I take over somebody's mortgage and they owe a hundred thousand in thirty years, I owe nothing on that property. It costs me nothing to buy it. Maybe a thousand bucks, maybe five thousand dollars out of my pocket to buy it, but it costs me nothing. Plus, the whole time I'm getting rent on that property, and even if the rent is just a break even, the first couple of years, same thing. As time goes by, the rent goes up. I make more money. You look, I'm 56 years old, and I don't have a retirement plan. I don't have a pension plan like you know some of you guys out there, some of you Governor Governor Wolf uh, workers out there who have retirement plans. You know. Pensions? You got? Pensions? You don't have a pension, Larry? Yeah, I don't have a pension. Yeah, exactly. Because you know, because I, 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 I take care of myself. I don't have to. Uh, I don't. I don't have to. You know. Anyway, I'm not going to get into that. But you want to hear about my uh, subject two uh, presentation this morning? Your subject two presentation? Sure. Yeah, I went to a. Um, uh, I went on a sales call. Uh, a client who's interested in selling uh, their house, and I went on the appointment, and I made a presentation to buy their house subject to. Right and not give them any money essentially. Right, they're gonna get nothing. But uh, their most important thing was that they want to move. They want to move down south and they want to just leave. Right, because right now if they sold their house, they'd have to uh, they'd have to bring a check to settlement, and they don't want to do that. 
So I, she said, uh, she basically said, I'm going to need some moving money. And I said, okay, uh, you know, and I'm thinking, you know, she's going to say a number. I got a number in my head, I think she's going to say. And I said, what's your, what's the number you're going to need to move? And she says, 40. I said, 40,000? Where are you moving? To Australia? Yeah. 40,000 in moving money. So she needs $40,000 of the moving money, and there's no money in the house, right? There's the, 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 uh, yeah, the house is underwater, right? Virtually none. Yeah, right, so right. You know, it's kind of like by the time I'm done paying the clothes and costs and everything, there's nothing. There's so nothing. did you explain to her that she's not getting 40 anyway, anyhow, <laughs> anywhere? So here's a reasonable number of $5,000? So what I decided to do was I wanted to go back and uh, – I usually email the comps to myself, but for some reason, uh, I had a glitch in emailing the comps to myself. So I just decided, I said, look, I'll call you back later on tonight. And uh, and if she's listening, I'll call you back later on tonight. <laughs> and we're going to talk about it. <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I was thinking more like a couple of grand, yeah, you know, sure. maybe five. Right. But but that if I'm paying both sides of the closing costs, yeah, there's, there's 10 grand right there. So I'm yeah. going to tack another five on top of it, you know. Uh, but either way, it's a decent house, so I'm interested in it, and I think I can rent it out at a nice profit. So I'll get them. I'll start making money right away. So let's see what happens. So what Phil's talking about, in case you don't know, is it's a it's a it's a process in which we buy houses, which is subject to the mortgage. And basically, if somebody has a mortgage on their house and they're underwater in their mortgage, or they or they um, or they need to move and they have no equity in their house. So sometimes, let's say a house is worth a hundred thousand, they owe a hundred and ten thousand. And their payment, let's say, for example, is a thousand dollars. These people can't move. They don't want to be landlords. They don't want to keep the property. They don't want to have the liability. They just need to move, and they want to go somewhere. So what we'll do is we'll make them an offer that says, "Listen, we'll take over your mortgage payment. We'll take over your property, and you don't have to pay anything, pay anything for that." Because think about it: if they owe one hundred and ten thousand on a property that's worth a hundred thousand. Well, first of all, they got to come up with the ten thousand, assuming somebody buys the property at full price. Then they got to pay transfer tax. That could be another two or three grand. Then they've got to pay on top of that maybe a realtor fee. So that could be another six grand. So and they have to come to closing with probably close to twenty thousand dollars if they sell the property. Where we could say, listen, we'll give you two or three thousand dollars to move. Go find another place to live. We'll take over your property. We'll take over your mortgage, and you don't have to worry about it anymore. Now I'm going to tell you that sounds really easy, and it is to a point. But if you don't do it right, the bank's going to come after you and say, I'm uh, sorry, we want you to pay this mortgage in full right now. And if you don't know how to do that, and if you don't know how to make sure that that doesn't happen, and you will learn that, of course, in investor schooling, and if you make sure that that doesn't happen, that won't happen. As a matter of fact, it's never happened to me. It's never happened to Phil. It's never happened to anybody we know. Well, I shouldn't say it hasn't happened to anybody we know. It's it has happened, happened to yeah, one person people we I know. know. Yeah, exactly. Right. And they did it wrong. It was bef- They weren't a student. They didn't know who we were. And it was a mess because they did it wrong. And we, we, we talked to them about it. So if you're listening, uh, dial 855-939-1137 with your questions. And I'm going to continue with the topic of, is real estate the best investment ever? So I'm going to give you a couple of reasons why I think real estate is absolutely the best investment ever. I know of nothing that gives you the leverage that you get from real estate. So where else can you put down 10%? or 20% to buy an investment, and somebody else puts up the other 80%. That's a pretty... Try doing that with stocks. Try oh, yeah, that's, you're talking about a traditional way. That's traditional. That, and even that's fantastic. Yeah, We've yeah, been just I talking mean, about some creative financing. I don't, I don't, I don't want to start with yeah. some 3% down first-time home buyer sure, program, which sure. is available right now. Which is even fantastic, too. Right. So imagine, like, I'm actually just going to say, look, 20% down, okay? I'm not a mortgage guy. I don't really know what their strategies are today. I don't really care a whole a lot about it. But the bottom line is, is that real estate offers tremendous leverage. Let me get this straight. You can buy millions of dollars worth of property, and somebody else pays 80% of that or 75% of that or whatever the percentage works out to be. It's amazing. What else do you get with real estate? You get generous financing. Right now, the financing, you, you, you might even qualify for a 3.1% loan right now. The, the rates are incredibly low. What, tell me, uh, call up your stockbroker. And tell them that you want to buy $100,000 worth of stock. And uh, ask them if you can just put down like 20, 
20% of the money and uh, borrow the rest <laughs> and see where that conversation goes. It won't be good. Another, another reason that I love real estate, and this is a really important thing. When you buy stocks, for example, you're paying whatever the stock is selling for at that moment, all right? But when you buy real estate, it's quite possible if, if you do your homework, if you know this business inside and out, that you can buy property significantly under market value. Now, it could be because it needs some work. It could be that the owner is not completely sure of what the value of the property is. There's a lot of reasons why people would sell their house. It could be uh, under market value. It could be because of the particular circumstances going on with those people. Maybe they need to move. They got a job in Arkansas and they got to leave like ASAP and they're willing to sell their house quickly under market value just so somebody else takes it and they don't have to worry about it anymore. So another thing that I love about real estate is after you buy it, one of the things that you can do with real estate is you can increase the value of your real estate. That's right. So you buy a house, and you can increase the value of that house. How? About a thousand different ways. You could paint the place. You could fix it up. You could do landscaping. If it's a rental property, you could find a good tenant to rent it out, and now the thing is a fine-tuned, well-oiled machine that's paying you money every month. If you don't know this, investment properties are valued on really one major thing, how much money it makes. So if you have a portfolio of many properties making you money, <coughs> it's incredible. Let me keep going. I got a couple more. Okay. One of the beauties of real estate is that you do not have to sell real estate to reap the rewards. So like if you own some stock and your stock doubled in value, you kind of have to sell your stock in order to get the extra cash out that you just made. But in real estate, you don't have to sell your real estate. You can refi the real estate. There's a lot of different things you can do with real estate other than just sell it. So you could actually buy assets where somebody else puts up 80% of the money. You could buy assets with amazing leverage. You could buy assets that have generous financing. You could buy properties under market value. You can increase the values of those properties after you buy them. You don't have to sell your properties in order to reap the rewards. And it's for these reasons that I just mentioned that I say real estate rocks over stocks. Ooh, real estate rocks over stocks. That's just so cool. I love it. And, and I totally agree. I, I, don't, I don't invest in stocks at all. I invest in stock options for some of the same reasons because you have incredible amount of leverage. But seriously, the bulk of my life and the bulk of my investments are in real estate. If you were to take my net worth and divide it, you will see that it probably, I'm going to say probably around 75% of my net worth is in real estate. And then probably somewhere between 15 and 20% of it is in stock options and 5% is in some other things. So it's, it's also important that I also tell people this, that if you're going to invest in stock options, that you never take more than 20% of your net worth. Now, of course, there are some people that come to us with a net worth of maybe $20,000, and that's a different situation. But if you have a serious net worth, we don't want you to risk money on stock options. We want you to take a amount of money that says, look, if you make a really, really, really big mistake, and it happens, uh, what, could, what could you afford to lose and not change your lifestyle? This happened to me a couple of years ago. I had a really bad year. It was my first bad year, actually, ever in, in stock options. It was my first bad year ever in stock options. Now, it wasn't that bad. It was just that it actually turned out to be actually not bad at all, to be honest with you. But it was, it was not – I was used to making two to $300,000 a year trading stock options, and that was a year that I just did not do that. So it was a little bit different for me. But at the same time, as long as you're not as long as you're comfortable with losing a certain amount of money, we'll teach you how to invest that in stock options at the same time. And if you don't want to invest in real estate, we're going to teach you how you can take some assets and help other real estate investors with their investment by lending them money. Because that's a really cool way too. And if you lend them money properly and you know how to do it properly, you won't get burned. In fact, there are a lot of people who lend me money that wish I was dead right now. You want, we, we should get into this. This is kind of cool. So what, what we do is when we, when we borrow money from people, and what, when, what we do is we teach you how to borrow money. We put what's called a confession of judgment inside the lending documents. And this confession of judgment basically says if we miss three payments, then 
you get the property automatically. And, and uh, as, a, as the borrower, we'll pay all expenses for you to get the property. So if it costs you money to hire a lawyer to sue us, which, by the way, that would be foolish, but that's because okay, we, we just give you the property because it costs us more money to do that. So the Confession of Judgment says you automatically get the property. And when I make the joke that a lot of people wish I was dead right now, what that means is I owe a lot of people a lot of money, and I have a lot of property that's worth a lot more money than I owe them. So if somebody doesn't pay my mortgages, now my wife will, of course, pay my mortgages, and so will my children. But that, that's the joke. That's the running joke. And also, it's also a great way to tell people, hey, listen, we're so sure you're going to get paid that this is how it works. We, we know you're going to get paid. Don't worry about it. And we'll teach you how to do that as well if you have a certain amount of money you want to lend to real estate investors. All right. So at this point, why don't we go to a, a quick commercial break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about our stock option picks of the week. You don't want to miss this. This is how you're going to make money next week, just like that guy who called up Larry this week. So we'll be back in two minutes. Hi, I'm Phil Falcone from Investorschooling.com. I'm inviting you to a complimentary class in Langhorn this Thursday night at 7 p.m. I will teach you how to buy ugly houses and make them beautiful. As a bonus, we will also teach you stock option investing. So get your butt to this meeting, 7 p.m. this Thursday night, Langhorn, 215-876-3002, Investorschooling.com. Hey, everybody, it's Larry Sinus from Investorschooling.com. You heard my partner, Phil Falcone, tell you why you should be there this Thursday night to learn about real estate investing and learn about stock options trading. We're telling you right now, you will make more money than you've ever made in your entire life if you learn these two skills. Be there this Thursday night at 7 o'clock in our Langhorn headquarters. Go to Investorschooling.com. Pull over right now. Take out your phone and go to Investorschooling.com. RSVP right now. Investorschooling.com. See you Thursday. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. I got a question for you. What do you get for $4.95 a month at Executech Suites? You get an office big enough for one person. You get the furniture in that office. You get the telephone on the desk. You get the telephone number. You get the fax number. You get the internet. You get two full-time receptionists to answer the phone in the name of your company and patch the calls to you, whether you're in the office, in your car, or at home sleeping on a couch. You get the conference rooms. You get the mailboxes. You get the printer, the copy, the scanner. You get the janitorial service, the utilities, and free coffee. I know it's hard to believe that you could get all those things for $495 a month. But it's true. 67 Buck Road in Huntington Valley, Executech Suites. Give us a call, 215-942-7701, 215-942-7701. Hey, everybody, it's Larry Sinus from InvestorSchooling.com. And I'm Phil Falcone from InvestorSchooling.com. Hey, what are we going to teach him this Thursday night, Phil? We're going to teach you how to invest in real estate so you can build a basis to get rich. And I promise I'm going to teach you stock options. So go to InvestorSchooling.com and RSVP right now. Right, Phil? We've been in this business for 30 years. We have amazing amounts of information to share with you. Get your butt to this meeting this Thursday night in Langhorn. InvestorSchooling.com. Welcome back to Investor Schooling Live. Hey, this is Larry Steinhaus, and I'm here with Phil Falcone, and we are talking real estate, we are talking stock options, we are talking making money. <laughs> oh, yes. It's almost, it's actually fun to make money. When you're making money, it's just fun. Like, you know, a lot of people go, oh, you know, sometimes you only think about money. I'm like, no, I don't. I think about having fun, and it's fun to make money, right? Don't you think it's fun to make money, Phil? One of the one of my favorite hobbies. It is a great hobby. I mean, you know, remember we, we were talking about how we spend ten thousand dollars a month in meals. Well, we weren't allowed to do it last month, so you know we have a lot of fun with the money we make too. So let's talk a little bit about uh, some cool things coming up. You know, you heard us say a little while ago we talked a little bit about uh, the investor brokerage, which is where we uh, we Phil and I actually have a brokerage. And you know, just to be clear, so you guys understand, we don't actually we're not like the normal real estate agents. If you have a million dollar house you want to sell. You probably don't want to use us. That's really not who we are. We're not the guy who you know puts out that million dollar listing. You know, unless it's a unless it's a multi family house or an apartment building, that's prob that would probably be us. But if you have a, a million dollar McMansion, we probably don't want the listing. We we could refer you to somebody. We help. We know people in the industry uh, that we could refer you to. But it's not it's not really our listing. The kind of listings that we look for and the kind of listings that we work with are people who have investment properties. In fact, you know, if you have an investment property right now and you want to be able to buy it or you want to be able to sell it, 
we'd be more than happy to help you. But we also bring in real estate agents. Now, real estate agents have a really sweet deal with the investor brokerage, and we're basically a 100% commission deal. We look. We have a transaction fee, and that's it. It's a very small transaction fee. And what that does is it makes it so you get 100% of your commission. I mean, if you're working for blah, 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 big box realtor, and they're taking 50% or 60%, I'm sorry, they're giving you 50% or 60%, maybe 70%, we're going to give you 100%. So you, you, you actually make more money. We're, not, we're more excited about the people who come in here and the people who bring us deals and the people who we can partner with and people make money, that's why we have a 100% commission deal because we know that in the end, everyone's going to make more money if we give you a sweeter deal on that. And you left out the best part, Larry, is that once a, a year, you don't have to pay $500 oh, to the Pennsylvania Association of Realtors. Right, exactly. Uh, for which you get about yeah. 10 bucks worth of effort. Yeah, you, you you get a you get a pen that says uh, Pennsylvania Association of Realtors. They, they proved they proved their worth during this COVID. They really they really did. I was really upset about it. I was blasting people uh, over yeah. that. that, that they were really the invisible me. man. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I didn't hear anything. Yeah. They were like, like, do they even exist? No. I, I think it, they were really busy sending out the late yeah. fee notices to all the people who didn't pay their bill. In the time that realtors needed them more than ever yep. in a hundred years, yep, they were completely silent. Yep. I would have actually. I would have actually consider rejoining if they would have put out a broadcast that said we, they would cover the legal fees. Anyway, so we got just a few more minutes. What's your favorite topic here? To uh, yeah, right, Phil. What's your favorite topic? Well, let's talk about some stock option picks. That's what I figured your favorite topic was going to be. That's why I asked. Come on. I'm looking for some uh, place to put my money on Monday morning. So I have to first say one thing that I was so absolutely wrong, and you were so right last week. So Last week, I said the market was going to drop because of the riots, and you said the riots were insignificant, and you were dead on. They were completely insignificant to Wall Street. And, you know, it's funny because I'm thinking about it, and I'm thinking about, wow, you know, all I saw on Facebook, all I saw on TV was riot, 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 riot. But you're right. It was such such small square footage of area in the United States and so many other things that were more mm. important were going on which were things like businesses reopening, people being rehired. And I missed that because I was so busy, focused on one thing. And sure enough, that cost me some money last week. Uh, it didn't, I mean, it, so far it didn't cost me anything because I didn't sell those positions. I actually made money on certain positions. I made money on Boeing. I made money on Wells Fargo. But I didn't make any money on, like, you know, I had a, my S&P put, my J&J &J put, and my Facebook put. Both of those might turn into bad plays. But look, here's the deal. So we say this over and over again. As long as you have more good plays than bad plays, you're always going to make money. And don't expect, to, don't expect to go the whole year without losing money. Now, at the same time, I'm not out of these plays. And I think that might – look, it's most likely that there's going to be a slowdown this week just because you have a bunch of people taking what we call their stake. So we, 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 we teach a theory called the stake and tuna theory in investor schooling. And if you understand the stake and tuna theory – then you will really understand what happened in the market last week and why it doesn't matter. And sure enough, uh, there'll be people taking stake, and hopefully that'll cause the market to go down a little bit and we can recover some of those not losses yet because they're not losses yet. Uh, but it's not a lot of money because you got to remember that w what we do is we teach people also to be in different positions, and when they're in different positions, different things happen. You can make money on some, and, if you, and while you're making money on others, maybe you're not making money on this one, but it's okay. So here's what's what I think is going to happen. It's a kind of a bizarre place right now. The economy is back. COVID's over. Um, just like Donald Trump said, one day it's going to just disappear. And it, it did. It just disappeared last week because obviously no one cares anymore because they're all – they can go to riots, but they can't open their business. So COVID disappeared in the riots. Actually, if we would have known that riots would make COVID disappear, I probably would have caused riots about a month ago and got us all back into life. However, <laughs> so much for that rant. So anyway, so here's what I think is going to happen. There's going to be things like American Airlines, Royal Caribbean, uh, uh, Carnival Cruise Lines. They're all going to go back to where they were. They were in like Carnival uh, Royal Caribbean was in the hundreds. Uh, Wells Fargo was around fifty, and um, Carnival was around forty-five, fifty. They're all going to go back there. The real question is when. I'm going to look for any weaknesses this week. Now Royal Caribbean popped the other day, and I missed it. 
But I'm going to look for any weaknesses in these stocks over the next couple of days. And if we get lucky, we'll look for a weakness, we'll jump on it. Facebook will always be moving forward. It's just going to be a matter of, again, if there's a weakness. If I get really, really, really lucky, Facebook will fall below 210 or 205 even. I'll get in and I'll play it into earnings the next, the next earnings session, which comes up in about 45 days. And hopefully that will also be a, a really good play. So e look for everything to go back to where it was. Here's another prediction if you want to hear it. Uh, I say the stock market hits 30000 before the election, and here's why. I really believe the money managers all want Trump as the president, and they're going to do whatever they can to make sure that happens. And that's going to keep the stock market flying. Because um, what's his name? The guy who forgot his name is just not going to be able to do the same thing as Trump can do in the stock market right now. Well, thank you for the uh, nice words about my instincts on the directional uh, heading of the stock market last week. I, I have a, a little tidbit that I've picked up. I, I spend a lot of time listening to Fox Business, and I read a lot of things that people put out about the stocks. And let me ask you this, Larry. With all the riots that have been going on, do you think that that would defund the police, or do you think the police would spend <laughs> more money? Do you think the police would spend more money on guns and ammo and, and, and gear that would help them in a riot? What do you think? Which direction well, would cl cl Clearly, uh, well, I'm looking forward to them defunding the police. I really am. You don't want to know why? Because I just want to watch the anarchy. I, I just want to watch it. It's going to be so much no, fun to don't. watch the anarchy. No, you don't. Yeah, see, you don't want to see the country. Of course fall I apart. don't. Of course I don't. Let me tell you. Give me. Give you a little piece of news. All right. So I read uh, today that the Kansas City Police Department just secured a two point five million dollar order for body cameras, sure. for example. Okay. So riot gear doesn't mean it's it's like all bully clubs and guns and but but police equipment. Every police department in the country is going to start piling on this stuff and um i did look up some companies that were that were beneficiaries oh, of this expenditure very good and i don't know much about them i haven't even had a chance to look at the uh, at the chart yet but dgly is a company i want you to look at read the chart and tell me what you think about it uh, I, we don't have any time to do it now we're, we're yeah i don't mean now i mean left. something yeah. to look it up yeah and we can talk about it at the school yeah so I think we actually, uh, what do we got? Uh, just a couple of seconds. I think you should say goodbye. <laughs> We've got more than a couple of seconds. So I want to say thanks to John Cole for producing this show for us. And make sure you check us out 2 p.m. on Saturday on uh, 1210 Radio. This is Investor Schooling Live. And we are inviting you to a complimentary class, 7 o'clock, InvestorSchooling.com. On Thursday night, we hope to see you there. We out of here.